Today, we're going to look at my top five characters who should have narrated at least one book. This is, again, another fun video where I'm just going to say, I'm going to put them in order of who I think, all right, I've already got the wife waving around. The, um, the buffalo. The bu Stop with the silly suggestions, my dear. That would have been an awesome one. Really? Get back in your box. Very well. So, uh, yeah, where was I? My top five characters who should have narrated an Animorphs book with my reasons why. And when I'm done with this video, I'd like to see what your suggestions would be in the comments below. So, what? Megadeth. Megadeth? Oh, the cat. Right, that's it. You're out of this video. Go on. In fact, divorce. <laughs> ha ha ha. <laughs> Let's move on. At number five is that wily son of a gone robot piece of doggy crap, Eric. Why Eric? Well, he's at the bottom of the list because I really wouldn't want to read it, honestly. Because he is... I don't like him. I don't like Eric. He's just such a double-crossing little bastard. I don't like him. But I couldn't really think of many other characters. There aren't that many characters who, who I think are deserving of a narration. But Eric is in it so often, and he's so prevalent in a lot of it, that it would have been useful to get his perspective. What and how? He's boring. Are you... <laughs> Eric is boring. He's not boring, he's just a double-crossing twat. But he, um, yeah, I think it would have been useful to get at least some insight from a Chi perspective because they were so ingrained in the war for whatever reason. And we might actually find out well, where all this double crossing is taking us, why it's all there. Apart from that, yeah, you're right. I think it would be a bit dull. And I personally would just be a bit like, fine, I'll read it. But it would have been useful in some regards just to fill in some little gaps here and there. So at number five, it's Eric the Chi. Number four, Arbron. Now, Arbron was the Andalite who was stuck in Taxon Morph. And that was in the Andalite Chronicles, which is a crap book, by the way. Don't say anything. It's amazing. I loved it. Uh, but despite the fact that I wasn't a great fan of that book and the, and the means by which you end up getting stuck and all that sort of jazz, go watch my Andalite Chronicles view, uh, review for why that is. Shut up, phone. What are you screaming at me for? Despite the fact that I wasn't very keen on how he became a Taxon Nofflip, it would have been interesting to see how we get from that point to what happens in book 53, the answer, why the Taxons eventually turn. I mean, we, we pretty much know. We, we, we know. They, they tell us, but it would have been nice to see that a bit more fleshed out. Again, like with Eric, it could end up being a bit boring. I mean, the, the authors have plans for a Taxon Chronicles, which I can only imagine would have been narrated by Arbron, so they at least had some idea of of something they could do that would keep us entertained. And so, yeah, there probably is something there that could be done. Personally, I thought Arbron's character was a bit of a waste, largely, and especially that tax and plot at the end, at book 53, was, it was basically just a plot device to get Jake and Tom to meet. That was all of that tax and rebellion was for. That's it, there wasn't anything else to it, really. But it would have been nice for there to have been something to it, which is where an Arbron narration could have come in handy. So it could have been interesting. It could have been. But he's number four on the list. The top three, I think, would be somewhat more interesting. Number three, Aftran. Remember Aftran from Book 19, The Departure, where Aftran was introduced. Aftran essentially started the Yurk Peace Movement. We don't know that specifically, it's just that she left on good terms with Cassie at the end of book 19 and the next time we hear about Aftran, apparently there's now a Yerk Peace movement that Aftran helped to start. We never actually get any details on why. Maybe it would be nice to get uh, Aftran's point of view as to how that happened. Maybe the beginnings of the Yerk Peace movement. And then of course in book 43? I believe it was book 43 where the Yerk Peace Movement went into the Yerk... Oh, that's when Taylor thought they would be in the Yerk Pool. Because Tidwell... and Tidwell was warned, and my memory's a bit fuzzy on that at the moment. 
But there's a lot of stuff, well, not too much, but there's a few things that the uh, peace movement do for which there just really isn't that much explanation. It just sort of is coincidental. It would have been nice to have a book somewhere from Aftran's perspective explaining how these things work. And also it's a very interesting thing, the Yerk peace movement, just inherently in itself. The Yerks that are fighting back against the the awful system that the, the rest of the, the war Yerks are doing. I think that would have been a very interesting read and I would have loved to have read that. But he's only number three on my list. She. Was that trying to... It's ambiguous with the Yerks, whatever. Numero de Toby Hammy, the leader of the Free Hawk Bajir. She would have been very interesting for, for a number of reasons, because towards the end of the series especially, the animals go into a camp with Toby and she is, sort of becomes part of the team. She's going on the missions with them, she's in the meetings with them and everything like that. She's also in control of this large group of Hawk Bajir, so she plays quite a vital role. She chooses which ones go where, why and how. And then she was on board the Yerk pull ship at the very end, taking... I forget which part of the ship she was taking, I'd have to refresh my memory of that, but she, she and her Hawk Bajir took a large portion of the ship, essentially got the Yerks to surrender on board. So, just seeing the background of her... There's actually a, a fan fiction where somebody did this. It was the Earth Diary of Toby Hammy. I, I know it's not canon, and it's fan fiction, but something like that in a canon proper fictional, proper fiction, proper setting, canon, would have been brilliant. And I, I sort of see that as canon, the Earth Diary of Toby Hammy. Fant fantastic read, go read it yourselves. But yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff that goes on with them that we don't quite see because the animals just sort of skip over it a lot, but Toby Hammer would, would have been a great narrator. It would have also been the, only the second Hawk Bajir to narrate, which is too few in my opinion. So that would have been great. Before we get to my numero un character for narration, I want to cover two that came close to being on this list, just very briefly. So... Tom and James. So James comes very late into the series, is around for a couple of books and then dies. There wasn't much that we could have explored with him, I don't think. I don't think there was much really there. that We couldn't have got a full book out of him, I don't think. Everything he does is pretty much written in there and he's only around for two books, time-wise. So yeah, I don't think there's much could have been done with him. And then Tom, Jake's brother. Same sort of thing, he's around for a lot of the series, but everything that he seems to do is tied in with the rest of the, st with actions going on in the series, so we'd just be seeing stuff that we've already seen from a different perspective, which could be useful, and it would also be good to see what the real Tom is thinking. We, we never get to hear him speak or anything like that in the series, so that would have been all right. I might put him on the list, actually, put him in place of Eric. Fucking Tom's at number five now. Yeah, it could have been interesting. It's just finding what the plot would be in a Tom narration that isn't covered visibly in the rest of the series. I suppose that was, that's what fan fiction's for. But anyway, let's get on to number one. Which character I think should have had a narration? I've got a very specific reason why this character should have, an, have had a narration, and it's actually questionable whether he did. Did he have a narration? Where is that book? Here it is. I'll turn them off to the next passage. Technically narrated by David. Sort of. But also, is it canon? Probably not. Maybe is. So my number one pick is a... Is a is, is he really not narrated? Clearly, when you read Alternamorphs 2, David is the character that you are. Whether you are David or you're a fill-in for David, it's clear if you read this book that you're reading from David's perspective. But is it canon? If I'm going to do an anti-theory someday, asking that very question. But on most people's mind at the moment, no, it is not canon, which is why I think David should have a proper narration. And not only do I think David should have a narration, but I know exactly where it needs to be placed and what it needs to be about, okay? So you've got the David trilogy, 20, 21, 22. 
And one of the flaws of that trilogy is that he turns evil very, very suddenly. Very suddenly, somewhere around in the middle of 21 to the start. Of, yeah, somewhere in the middle of 21. There needed to be a fourth book to this trilogy, so it would be a quadrilogy, I imagine. And it needed to get into David's head and give a solid reason or set of reasons for his turn to the dark side. If we had that, that trilogy would be spot on, as far as I'm concerned, because that, yeah, that is one of the major flaws of that trilogy. It just, out of nowhere, it's just, oh, David's bad now. He's bad now. So to have that David narration in the midst of that would have been perfect. And that's why he's number one of my list of characters who should have had a narration. Do you have any thoughts, my dear, again? Okay, that's a no. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please give your first thoughts in the comments below. I'm getting evils right now. You took too long. I can't hang around all day, you know. Sure you can. Oh, okay. You do all day anyway. I do not hang around all day. What an? Hey, give me your suggestions in the comments below. If you agree with me, give me a, a big thumbs up on this video. And if you disagree with me, also put a thumbs up on the video. In fact, if you don't have any opinions on anything at all ever, put a thumbs up on this video. Or if you think about everything all the time, put a thumbs up on this video. Or Thank you very- Or if you just like pie. Or if you just like pie, put a thumbs up on this video, yes. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for watching. I'll be back for you at some point later. Thank you very much. I shall see you later. Ta-ra!